Today I want to clear up some of the confusion surrounding certain topics related to various free and open source projects out there because here lately on some of my videos I've noticed that a lot of people are really confused about certain things. I noticed this the other day on my Hey DT video where the uh, thumbnail here talks about I don't cover Chrome OS because I don't cover things like Chrome OS and Vivaldi and Microsoft Edge and things like that because they're proprietary software. And when I mentioned this, I got many comments on that video telling me Chrome OS is in fact free and open source software. And so is Google Chrome and so is Microsoft Edge and so is the Vivaldi browser and, and many, many other things that are in fact proprietary software. And I understand why some of this is confusing. I'm going to get to why certain people are led astray on these topics. And we're going to actually set some, some of the facts straight on that here in just a second. Another video where it seemed like a lot of people were really confused. My video about Odyssey. Odyssey as a YouTube alternative. And I had several people in the comment section of that video tell me that Odyssey is no different than YouTube because, in fact, Google owns both YouTube and Odyssey. And that's actually not true. <laughs> I will actually demonstrate that that is in fact not true. I understand why people are confused about this as well. So today, again, I, I just wanted to cover uh, some of these topics and I'm, I'm going to pull up my web browser and we're going to do some quick Google searches and we're going to verify that in fact a lot of these myths are in fact myths. Now, one thing I wanted to briefly touch on with free and open source software versus proprietary on my Hey DT the other day, I mentioned that there's no middle ground. Something is either free and open source software or it's proprietary. And that's absolutely true. A lot of people seem to be confused about that statement because they're like, hey, DT, you've got free and open source software on your computer, but you also said you have proprietary video drivers, Wi-Fi drivers, things like that. Like you have to use some proprietary software, but you said there's no middle ground. I mean, in the licensing of a piece of software, there is no middle ground. You either are free and open source or you're not. <laughs> there's no, there, there's no in between. So if something has any proprietaryness to it, any proprietary stuff added to it at all, then it is proprietary software. It cannot license itself under a free license like the MIT, BSD, GPL, Apache license, the Mozilla license. You know, you can't use those licenses if there's any proprietary stuff going on with your piece of software. So it's either 100% open source, free and open source, or it's proprietary. Right? If there's 0.01% of proprietariness to a piece of software, right, then it is in fact proprietary software. Again, there's no middle ground. It's either free and open source or it's proprietary. And that's just, that's not me making this up. There are definitions describing what free software is and what open source software is. And again, there's just no middle ground here. And you can verify this quickly as far as what a license of a piece of software is if you just use a Google search. Just pull up Google and do name a program license. And typically it will tell you what something is licensed under. For example, let me pull up my browser here and I'm just gonna just try this out. Firefox license. Oh, the very first search result, Mozilla public license, right? That's is what uh, Mozilla uses to license all of its software like Firefox, and that is a free license. So that's very easy to verify, right? Now, what if I wanted to check the license on uh, Windows 11? Now, I'm probably going to get information about license keys and things like that. So I don't get like something obvious answered here, but what I could do is do uh, Windows 11 Wikipedia, if I could spell Wikipedia right, and just go to the, uh, if it's a big piece of software, go to their Wikipedia page, and Wikipedia always gives you the licensing information. And you can see source model, it's closed source. So right there, <laughs> it's proprietary software. And I hover over what closed source means, and it tells me proprietary software, also known as non-free software or closed source software. So there's no question, right, that you know Windows is closed source software. Of course, nobody had questions about Windows, but sometimes you try to do a search on some things and it's not so obvious. So one of the ones that's kind of, confusing Google Chrome and then various things based off of Google Chrome, uh, various browsers based off of Google Chrome like Vivaldi, Microsoft Edge, or the Chrome OS operating system which is browser based based off of Google Chrome. And a lot of people are like, all of that stuff's open source because Google Chrome is open source. No, if you type in Google, Google Chrome license, it is freeware. Now freeware 
is not to be confused with free software, right? Freeware is in fact a type of proprietary software. It's called freeware because it's free as in free of cost, but it doesn't necessarily meet the definitions of free software or open source software. They don't make the source code available typically for freeware. They don't allow you to modify it and redistribute and get all the freedoms associated with free and open source software. Freeware just means it's proprietary software, but you don't have to pay for it essentially. Now, one of the really confusing ones is Vivaldi. If I type Vivaldi browser license in Google, you, you know, typically you'll get an answer when you ask Google name a program license. It'll spit out GPL or MIT, or sometimes it'll actually say proprietary software. And in this case, it spits out BSD license. So naturally, a lot of people are legitimately confused here that Vivaldi is in fact licensed under a free license, the BSD license. So it is in fact free and open source software. But if you go to this web page on Vivaldi's website, you have to dig a little deeper. Vivaldi actually tries to trick people into thinking it's free and open source software. It's very shady. It's a, it's a really scummy tactic. And I think more people need to call out the team behind Vivaldi on this because they are legitimately trying to scam people. They're trying to trick people and they're just dishonest because when they say Vivaldi is licensed under the BSD license, Vivaldi, the engine of Vivaldi is the Chromium web engine, which is in fact open source software. Chromium is licensed under the BSD license. The Chromium web engine is licensed under the BSD license. But the complete browser on top of that engine, the UI and everything that Vivaldi adds to that, Vivaldi adds its own proprietary license to that. And again, either something is open source or it's proprietary. There's no middle ground. And what Vivaldi does even further to confuse people is this statement here. It says, in addition, our UI code is written in plain accessible code for those who read HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. This means that for all practical purposes, the Vivaldi source code is available for audit. Now, that's tricky right there, right? Because they did not say Vivaldi is open source. They said Vivaldi, the source code, everything is out there for you to look at. You can go look at the source code. That means that the source code is available. That's what the free and open source community typically calls source available. Now, source available is not open source. For something to be open source, it also has to allow you to modify the code, redistribute the code, right? It's going to be licensed under the, one of the big free licenses that guarantees you certain freedoms. Vivaldi doesn't do any of that. Vivaldi is, in fact, a proprietary license. It has a terms of conditions and an end user license agreement. None of it is BSD or GPL or any other free license you've ever seen. But they're tricky here because they're like, well, we're kind of open source because we're our web engine is based off of Chromium, which is open source. And our UI, we make the source code available. But you can be proprietary software and make the source code available. That is not what open source means. Open source does not mean just make the source code available. It's a much deeper definition than that. Uh, if you actually go to the open source initiative website, let me pull up my browser again. On the open source initiatives website, they actually have the official definition of what open source means, what that term means, what something has to meet to be qualified as open source. There are 10 criteria a piece of software must meet for it to be legitimately and legally called open source. Only one of those 10 criteria is making the source code available. So again, what Vivaldi is stating on their website, and they're, they're smart, they don't actually come out and say is that Vivaldi is open source. They ask this question, and then when they answer it, they don't actually answer it. They never state, yes, Vivaldi is open source. If Vivaldi was open source, this would be one sentence. Is Vivaldi open source? It would be, yes, Vivaldi is open source. But they give this roundabout answer without ever really answering it, and it's, it's confusing to people that don't know better. I understand why it's confusing, but in fact, Vivaldi is proprietary software. The people that wrote this garbage here on their website should be ashamed of themselves. And you people that actually use Vivaldi and like it, I'm sure it's a fine product. You need to actually call the Vivaldi team out on this kind of shenanigans and actually make them either change the wording on their website and actually admit that they're proprietary software or actually open source their software properly and license it 
as it should be under one of the big free licenses. And I'm not going to go into uh, Microsoft Edge. Microsoft Edge is licensed under a proprietary license. Just Google it. And like it, It'll come up. It's proprietary software. It's based off the open source Chromium engine. But Microsoft doesn't try to lie and claim it's open source, right? Uh, Microsoft didn't. Yes, yes, Edge is licensed under a proprietary license. Uh, one of the more confusing ones is Microsoft's VS Code. Because VS Code technically is open source. If you do a Google search, VS Code license, you'll get a link to their GitHub where the license for VS Code is actually the MIT license, one of the free licenses. So it's definitely free and open source software. Here's the tricky part with Microsoft and VS Code though. Most people that install VS Code get an official binary from Microsoft themselves. Microsoft packages the binary, especially on Windows, but they also make binaries for uh, Mac and Linux. And those official binaries that Microsoft packages, which 99.9% .9 of the people that run VS Code actually use the official binaries, right? And those binaries are actually relicensed under a proprietary license. The source code is out there. You know, it, it is free and open source software, VS Code. You can go find all the code for VS Code on GitHub and you're free to do whatever the hell you want to do with it. You can compile VS Code yourself if you have the skills, but that's not what most people do. Most people go and get the binary from Microsoft and Microsoft then changes it from free and open source software to proprietary software, which they're allowed to do because the MIT license actually allows you to take something and then relicense it under a proprietary license if you want to. This is something that the GPL license doesn't allow, which is one of the reasons I'm a big fan of the GPL. But unfortunately, the MIT license, the BSD license, the Apache license, they're much more permissive and allow companies to play these kinds of games. We should also clear up some of the meaning behind the terms free software and open source, because a lot of people seemed really confused by this, because I see people that make weird claims like, Richard Stallman obviously founded what is known as the free software movement. He's the one that basically created the phrase free software. And when I say that, people immediately reject that as like free software. That's just two really common terms that, that probably been in use decades before Richard Stallman ever uttered these words. So Richard Stallman clearly didn't invent free software. Well, yeah, he did free software in its current definition. And by current definition, I mean, uh, as defined by the Free Software Foundation for a piece of free software to be considered free software, it has to meet four criteria. It has to meet these four essential freedoms here. And that is what Richard Stallman means when he uses free software. And that's what everybody in the free and open source community means when they talk about free software. Yes, did people before Richard Stallman talk about free software? Yes, they talked about software that was free of charge. That free software is not the free software we're talking about today. So yes, Richard Stallman is in fact the founder of the free software movement. Another one that I sometimes people come back at me because I mentioned this on a video the other day it might have been that Hey DT episode about Chrome OS, and I talked about what is open source, and I said open source kind of really got its start with uh, Linus Torvalds and Eric Raymond, especially uh, coming up with that term as, as, as it's known today, as what open source software is today. And some people like to come back at me about that because open source, that term has been around for decades before. Eric Raymond and Linus Torvalds and, and all of that. And that is true. But like the free software definition, when people talk about open source now, they're talking about open source as defined by the open source initiative. We're talking about software that meets these 10 criteria. Yes, people use the term open source way before Linus Torvalds and Eric Raymond. But they were talking about open source as the source is open, available. You can view the source code. They're talking about source available back when they were talking about open source. Open source now means something completely different. It means you have to meet these 10 criteria. If you don't meet one of these 10 criteria, you are in fact not open source. So again, it's a different way. I know it's confusing, but free software actually means something. You have to meet those four essential freedoms. Open source actually means something. It means you have to meet those 10 criteria. Now free software, doesn't mean it's free of charge. That has nothing to do with free software. Open source doesn't mean the source code needs to be available. That's one very, very small part of what open source actually means. Now let me briefly talk about another 
point of confusion with people about Odyssey, because I made that video the other day about Odyssey, and people were like, you know what, Odyssey is owned by Google, so just like YouTube, so Odyssey is no different, why are you even talking about this, DT, what the hell's wrong with you? And they're right, when you go to the Google search engine and type Google bought Odyssey, and look, February of 2015, so more than seven years ago, Google acquires Odyssey, an app for private photo and video sharing, I don't know. It was some app that Google, I think, either wanted themselves, or really what they probably wanted to do was just uh, get rid of the app altogether. Many times, these gigantic companies will buy a smaller company just to get rid of them because their product competes with you know, Google, I'm sure, has apps for photo and video sharing. So they bought this company called Odyssey, spelled the exact same way. And if you read the article, it even tells you, yeah, they bought Odyssey, which has the iOS and Android app for this video sharing thing. And the acquisition was announced on Odyssey's homepage at odyssey.com. Right? If you click the link, it's actually odyssey.com. Like, so naturally, this is really confusing. You think, oh, this is legit that Odyssey is in fact owned by Google. No. So here's the thing. Odyssey, the Odyssey that Google bought was a completely different company than Odyssey that exists today. The Odyssey that Google bought was not blockchain based. They, they, again, they were doing this photo sharing, video sharing app, mobile apps and things like that. This is the crunch base uh, page for that Odyssey company which is founded by two, I'm assuming, Indian gentlemen, judging by the names. The headquarters was in San Francisco. It was founded in 2011, and of course it was closed down in February of 2015. So this was a long time ago, right? Different company, and I can verify that because Odyssey.com today is owned by Library Inc., L-B-R-Y Inc., Let's go to the Crunchbase page for Library, L-B-R-Y. It was founded in 2015. I actually checked the exact date. Uh, Library Inc. was founded in May of 2015, so three months after Google bought and killed the other Odyssey, right? And the founders are not the same founders. Uh, Jeremy Kaufman, you guys probably seen Jeremy on many uh, videos and podcasts talking about the library app and library protocol. He's very active on social media. He's not those two Indian gentlemen <laughs> that founded the other Odyssey, you know, seven years ago. He's doing his own thing. Of course, for many years, they were building this blockchain peer-to-peer uh, -peer protocol and this network. And it would, it wouldn't be until three or four years after they founded this company that library.tv, you know, the actual site that actually you could go watch videos on was created. And eventually they decided to shut that down, library.tv, and move it to a different site called Odyssey to avoid confusion because library is the name of the protocol. Library is also the name of the, uh, the coin, the cryptocurrency that everything's based on. And then the site itself where you go and watch the videos, library.tv, it was too many things that are different, all called the same thing, all called library. So they decided to buy a domain odyssey.com because google since they killed the company they killed that website too you know the, the company had odyssey.com that w uh, domain became available library inc bought the domain odyssey.com and we got another company founded uh now called odyssey different logo founded by one of the founders of library joshua finer you can see here and it is based uh they don't have a location here, but it's based out of Nevada, not out of San Francisco, where the old Odyssey was based. At. So different people, different locations, different times, a completely different company. It's just a weird coincidence that there was this app and company called Odyssey seven years ago that Google bought. And when they bought the company, they get everything the company owns, including that domain name. They killed that company. Google bought it just to get rid of that company. The domain becomes available, and the library guys decide to buy that domain and put something up on it. And I know it's, it's just a weird string, string of coincidences that makes it, because I'm sure they didn't think about it. Like when you do a Google search, Google bought Odyssey and it's there and it's pointing to the odyssey.com website and you think it's all legit, it's not. It's just, again, it's just weird coincidence. But I promise you, Library Inc. has absolutely nothing to do with Google. And when you think about it, if you've ever heard Jeremy Kaufman, the CEO, talk about Library, the whole, I mean, they're trying to be a YouTube killer, a Google killer. 
they are definitely not owned by Google. <laughs> like that, they would never sell to Google, and I don't think Google would actually buy them and then let Jeremy talk about Google the way he actually talks. So it's obvious. And the Odyssey platform, uh, like if you've ever been on Odyssey, nobody talks about YouTube or Google in a positive manner anywhere on that platform. I understand the confusion and everything I talked about today. Like I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say that the people that are confused by this stuff, that you guys are somehow stupid or you're, you were too lazy to go investigate this stuff. I understand. Just these Google searches I did in many cases are confusing to me. <laughs> like even, even now, even though I know better, some of these Google searches are like, hmm. Maybe Vivaldi really is licensed under the BSD license. You know, you have to dig a little deeper, unfortunately. And unfortunately, you do have these really scandalous, nefarious people out there that sometimes are trying to trick you into thinking things that just are not true. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Devin, Gabe, James, Maxim, Matt, Michael, Mitchell, Paul, Scott, Wes, Alan Armadrack, and Chuck Manringi, Dayokai, Dylan, George, Lee, Lennox, Ninja, Mike, Erjan, Alexander, Peace Arch, and Fedora, Polytech. Oh, this new patron. He's going to make me pronounce something in German, I believe. Realitiz for Lust. There's no way I pronounced that right, but I'm going with it. Realitiz for Lust. Red Prophets, Demon, and Willie, these guys, they're my highest-tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode would not have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors, guys. It's just me and you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux, free software, open source software, uh, debunking myths that people have about free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. A website that does nothing but trash Google is owned by Google? Really?